Um, okay, so just a quick look at what our talking points are tonight. I'm going to go over what VITA is, which is what the Human Services Center is, and then some of the fun credits we'll look at, the stimulus, some of our special credits, um, that charitable giving credit is back, and we'll talk about that. And then if you are looking for help to get your taxes done for free, we'll talk about how you qualify for that program, um, what documents you might need, and then how to get your appointment scheduled. Um, so to start, what is VITA? It is the Volunteer Income Tax Preparation. So this is an official program from the IRS. Any of the staff or volunteers who are working at VITA sites are all IRS certified preparers. So it's not some random person helping you with taxes. We've all taken tests and done lots of training to be able to help you. So the Human Services Center in Turtle Creek is a VITA site. And we are part of a tax coalition throughout Allegheny County and Southwestern PA. So we've got other nonprofit partners and agencies we work with who are also VITA sites. And this is a completely free service for you. Our goal is to help you get all of the money that you're due in your refund without you having to pay for any of it. Um, so we can help with most federal, state, and local tax returns. There are some things that are out of scope that we can't do, um, but we can help with most situations probably that people will have. So looking at some of the fun credits that are around this year. Um, so there's a stimulus payment. Um, this came out a really long time ago, but the third stimulus payment is a credit you can get this year. So what was it? It is $1,400 for every eligible individual. So if you are a couple that's filing a joint return, you would get double that, $2,800. And if you have any qualifying dependents, they also can bring you $1,400. Um, do you qualify to get this? You have to have a valid social security number and your dependents have to have a valid social security number. And then you have to meet income guidelines. So there are three bullet points here, depending how you file your taxes, if you're married filing jointly or qualifying widower, it's one level of your maximum income that you can have, head of household slightly less, and then anyone else can have up to 75,000 in income. Um, one important point, you don't need to have any income to get a stimulus payment. So if you had absolutely no income, you are still qualified to get this. And then we can help you get your tax return filed to help you get that. Um, so did you receive this already? Um, you may have received it if you got one of the first two stimulus payments. So those came in 2020 and when you filed taxes last year, um, that's when you reported to the IRS that you got those stimulus payments. The third stimulus payment came out in early 2021, and then you'll report it on the taxes that we're going to file in the coming months. So you may have gotten this money already. Um, and if you got it or if you didn't, we're going to need to know. Um, so if you got the stimulus payment, you are going to want to bring a letter with you from the IRS stating how much you received. Um, and then if you don't have a letter, you want to check your bank account statement for a deposit from what this says here, the IRS Treasure 310. That's like a little subject line that appears on your bank statement. Um, and there is also a website that you can go on to and check how much of your money you received. Now, the IRS is supposed to send a special letter to everyone who got one. It is letter 6475. They're mailing them this last week of January. So hopefully in a week or two, you'll get your letter that says if you got it or not. Or you may have gotten another letter last spring when they went out. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. Um, but it is very important that whatever letter you got, or if you didn't get a letter, check your bank statements or that online account to let us know that amount. Because um, the unfortunate thing is, if we enter the wrong information into the system when we do your taxes, your refund is going to get delayed. Um, so it's really unfortunate that some people who um, tried to claim the stimulus payments last year still haven't gotten their tax returns yet or their refunds yet um, because the IRS is going in manually checking all of those returns. So we don't want you to have to wait 
months and months on end to get your money and your refund. So that's why you wanna make sure that we're reporting the correct amount. If you didn't get the stimulus payment at all, you can claim it on this year's tax return. If you had a kid that was born in 2021, they make you eligible for that extra 1400. So we'll also wanna make sure we're helping you file for that so you can get the money you would get for your new child. Um, so this is an example of one of the letters you may have gotten. So this is the letter that I got last April saying that I got my stimulus payment number three. So a little black box is just hiding my name and address from you. But you'll see this red arrow is pointing to the paragraph in the letter that says, I got a direct payment of $1,400 that was issued to me. So if this is one of the letters that you got, you could bring this with you when you do your taxes, or you can wait and see what that letter is that the IRS is mailing out, hopefully this week. Um, the next fun tax credit for the year is the child tax credit. Um, so there were some big changes for this this year. Um, so the first big change is they changed the amount of money that you can get for each of your kids who might qualify. So if you have a kid who is up to six years of age, you can get up to $3,600 for each of those kids. If your kid is age six through 17, you can get up to $3,000 for each of those kids. Um, if you have a kid that turned 18 at any point during 2021, unfortunately, they no longer qualify for this credit. Um, so if they're still in high school, but they turned 18, unfortunately, they won't qualify but all of your other kids 17 and under would qualify. Um, you may not receive that full amount if you made a lot of money. Um, so if you're a couple that is married filing jointly and you made over $150,000, you wouldn't get say the full $3,000 for your 10 year old. Um, or if you're that single parent that made over 112,500, you may not get that full amount. Um, you'll get a prorated amount of that. Um, and this is another situation where you don't need to have any income to receive the child tax credit. So if you had absolutely no income and you've never qualified for this before, you do qualify now. Uh, and we want to help make you sure that make sure that you get this money that you are due. Um, so definitely come visit a tax site and we can help you with that. Um, this is also a fun one where the government sent us some of the money uh, beforehand. So you may have received some of your money in monthly payments starting back in July. So let's say, for example, you've got a 10 year old, you should be getting $3,000 total. If you got those monthly payments starting in July, you would have gotten six payments from July through December that add up to half of the total payment, so $1,500. To get the rest of your money, you then have to file your tax return and you'll get the rest of the credit that you are due for that child. And this is another fun one of, if you got any payments, we need to see documentation of that. Um, so you may have gotten a letter from the IRS that says something, um, you can check your bank account. If you don't have any letter, um, you can check those monthly payments that may have come in or this website, again, you can log into with some of your information and um, get documentation that shows how much you received so far. Um, and we're assuming that, again, if we report the wrong information on this, that you received a higher or lower amount than you actually got, that it's probably also gonna get stuck in the IRS as they're um, having to manually check those things. So that's why we wanna make sure that we're reporting the correct information for you. Um, so the IRS started sending a letter, letter 6419. They started sending that in December. They're still sending some of those letters out in January. So you may have gotten this letter yet, um, or it might be coming soon, but you will definitely want to bring something with you that shows what you received. And this is an example of what that 6419 looks like. So you'll see it says box one, what is the total amount of your advanced child tax credit payments you received in 2021? There would be some amount of money listed in there. Um, and then box two, number of qualifying children that they use to determine that amount. Again, there will be some number listed there. Um, 
you'll want to bring that with you because maybe they based it off, like if you had a kid who was born in 2021 that you should have gotten money for, maybe they were only counting your first child and not the fact that you have two. So we'll want to know what they were basing your amount on. So they sent you any random letters, just bring those with you. Our third credit we're going to look at is the earned income tax credit. Um, so this credit has been around for a while, but there are some changes to it this year, which are kind of fun. Um, so the first thing to remember, to get this credit, you have to have some type of earned income. So if your only income was retirement, social security, interest or dividends, unemployment, the alimony or child support, if that's the only money you received, you're not gonna qualify for this. Um, but if you had any other earned wages, you would qualify. And they adjusted the ages this year, which is really big. Um, so they lowered the minimum age to age 19, and then they took off the cap on the maximum age. So if you're a senior citizen who is still working and earning income, you can qualify for this now when maybe you haven't qualified for a number of years. Um, and if you are a former foster youth or a homeless youth, you actually might be able to qualify if you were at least 18 um, on December 31st. So lots of different age changes, but it means that a larger group of people will now qualify for this. Um, and if you're wondering, if you qualify based on your income, it's not a super straightforward answer. Um, if you qualify will depend on how many children you have and then what your filing status is. So that's why I included this little chart in the bottom. So for myself, as a, um, I don't have any kids that I'm claiming on my return and I file as single, I would have to make under the 21,430 that you see listed there. Um, if I had one kid and I was filing as a head of household, then I could make I would have to make under the 42, 158. So it's not a super straightforward answer if you qualify or not, um, but you just bring your paperwork with you to a VITA site and we help you figure that out. Um, so you'll see that your income amount will change based on how many kids you have until you get to three. And then it says three plus. Um, so it's just the same total answer if you have three, four, five kids or more. Um, so once you hit three, it's not gonna change any more than that. Um, this little chart, it, if it confuses you at first, don't worry. Um, I threw it in here to also show you how much you get out of that credit is going to change again based on your situations. So looking at our vertical line on the left, that's the total amount of money that you could qualify for for your credit. Looking across the bottom is how much is your adjusted gross income. And then we have different colored lines based on how many kids we have. So just quickly to explain it, if you've got three kids, you're going to have that topmost line, which is the darkest blue. And as you earn more income and you go up the slant on the left until you get to just under $15,000, it means you can get more and more and more of the credit. And then there's gonna be a plateau part where between two income amounts, that's the maximum you can get in the credit. And then as you start earning more income, you come down the other side and you might get less of the credit. So if you think you got less of the credit this year compared to a previous year, it might be because you moved somewhere along the line of how much you qualify for. Um, the other thing to think of when you're preparing what documents to bring with you for your taxes, if you know that your 2019 income was higher than your 2021 income, you'll want to bring a copy of that tax return with you because we can use the income information from 2019 to help you get a higher credit amount for this credit. So that can also be a little confusing. Like I said, just bring us all your fun paperwork. Vita will help you figure it out. If you aren't sure if you earned more income or not, just bring a copy of your tax return with you and we'll get you all situated. All right, our last fun credit to look at is the charitable deduction credit. Um, so this was new last year and they continued it for 2021, which is really great. Um, you can deduct 
up to $300 if you made charitable deductions without um, having to itemize your taxes. So that's if you took the standard deduction, you get this extra credit. If you are filing, married filing jointly, you can get up to $600. It helps double it for you. Um, so to qualify for this, you have to have donated money. Um, so that could be cash checks, online donations, as long as it was actually money. You can't donate goods. So if you donated to a thrift store, well, that's very nice. Unfortunately, it doesn't qualify for this credit. Um, and I say you can get up to 300. Uh, if you only donated 100, unfortunately, you only get the $100 credit, um, but it's better than nothing. Um, and if you're coming to a VITA site, we do not need to see your receipts or documents to prove that you donated this. Um, but if you would get audited by the IRS, you have to be able to prove that you did make those donations. So just keep that in mind. I don't personally need to see the receipt when I do your taxes, but you'll wanna make sure you have them in case the IRS would come back around and audit you. So those are some of those big new changes in credits for the year. So now we're going to look at um, if you qualify to get help at a VITA site um, and how to get your taxes done for free. So if you're wondering if you qualify to use the VITA service, your individual income, so if it's just one person listed on your tax return, your income needs to be under 38,000. If you are a household, your income has to be under 58. And that can be any household makeup. Um, it might be a couple who one is earning or maybe they're both earning wages or a parent and any number of children, grandparents and any number of children, whatever your household makeup is, you all qualify under that 58,000. VITA sites only do income tax returns. So if you have a business that you run, unfortunately, we can't help with that. We're only able to do income taxes. Um, and a note that we can do most income taxes, but depending on your situation, if there's something complicated involved in the paperwork you got, that may be out of scope and we're not allowed to help you. Um, there are some things the IRS says we're not allowed to do and unfortunately we have to follow those rules. Um, but if you're not sure if you qualify, uh, when you contact United Way to schedule your appointment, they'll help ask you a bunch of questions to make sure you can use the service and they can help you figure that out. Now, as I said, I'm at the Human Services Center and we're one of the VITA sites, but there's numerous ones around the county. Um, if you're coming to my agency site, we're only doing in-person tax preparation. We're not doing virtual appointments. Um, if you would like a virtual appointment or a drop-off appointment where you leave your documents and come back to pick them up, some of our partner sites offer that instead. Um, and then at HSCC, we don't do any military or international returns. But if you have that, our partner sites can help you with that. And when you contact United Way to get scheduled, they'll help get you connected to the correct place. And there is also, um, this link will be in the email that you get afterwards. If you love doing your own taxes, props to you. Um, I will include a link for a website that's completely free um, that you can do your taxes by yourself online. And it's a lot of guided prompts of like, do you have this form? Great, let's enter the information. So if you, that is what you love doing, I will give you a website where you can take care of doing that yourself then. Um, so if you do come to a VITA site, there's lots of paperwork to bring with you. Um, and don't feel like you need to write all this down. Like I said, you'll get copies of the slides. Um, so you don't have to furiously write this all. And we ask for all of this ahead of time because if you forget to bring something, then we can't complete your taxes. And then you have to go through a whole thing of leaving and scheduling another appointment and coming back. And we know that's a pain for you all. So we try to tell you everything ahead of time. So the first thing is getting a social security card for everyone that you're gonna list on your tax return. So that's you, if you're married and your spouse is gonna be on it, you need their social security card and any dependents you're gonna be claiming you need to see a social security card. Um, you need a photo ID for yourself and your spouse if you're filing jointly. Um, 
And if you're filing jointly, please also bring your spouse to your appointment because um, both of you have to sign your paperwork, but definitely need to see photo IDs for everyone there. You'll want to bring whatever shows your income from your wages. So for a lot of people, this is often reported on a W-2 that your employer gives you. Um, if it's not on a W-2 and you have some other random tax form, bring it with you, we'll help you figure it out. Uh, if you are self-employed, there are different names for those forms. Um, some of those might be a 1099 NEC, which means non-employee compensation, a 1099 miscellaneous, or a 1099K. If you've got any of those, bring them with you. We'll help you figure those out. Um, jobs that might be giving you this type of self-employment income, um, contractors that contract to work at an agency but aren't directly employed by them. Uh, if you drive for Uber or Lyft, that's self-employment income, or if you do something like deliveries for a company like DoorDash, that's all called self-employment income. Um, one thing you'll want to remember if you have those types of forms, you also have to provide what your expenses were for that work that you were doing. We, as a Vita site, are required to report that, so we need you to bring information with you. Some of those expenses might be if you're advertising for um, the work that you're doing, if you've got office supplies that you're buying, um, the, we use the standard mileage rate when we calculate your expenses. So we will need to know how many miles you were driving. Uh, if you had to pay tolls, um, we can, if your cell phone was used for business purposes, we can put a portion of that cell phone bill um, as an expense. And this is another one of those, in the event that the IRS would audit you, um, you need to have all of the receipts and documentation that back up whatever numbers we're putting on your tax return for you. So you might do a calculation and say, my cell phone bill is $40, that's what you need to list. Um, you'll need to have that documentation that proves how you got your $40. Um, if you know your business had a business loss that needs to be reported, that is definitely a situation we cannot help you with. Um, so that's one of those things you will have to file on your own or go through another type of system, but Vita sites can't help you if you had a business loss. Um, and there are also some types of self-employment that we can't help with because they're out of scope. Um, but when you call United Way to set up your appointment, they'll help you screen through that to make sure you are eligible for the service. Our next list of important documents to bring, um, if you got any unemployment income in 2021, that would be listed on your 1099-G. You'll wanna bring that with you. Uh, various types of retirement and social security income, you might have a pension, those usually are listed on a 1099-R or a 1099-SSA. Um, tuition and student loan interest. So this helps you get some of the education credits. Uh, if you paid tuition for yourself or a dependent, you will want to bring in the 1098-T that is issued by the school. Um, a note about this, they don't always mail you a paper form. So if you are the student or your child was the student, there's probably an email that someone got that said, your form is ready to download. And you go to a website and you need to download that form. So you'll wanna check if you didn't get something mailed to you that there is an email somewhere that tells you how to download that information from your school. If you paid student loan interest, you should be getting a 1098 E from your service loan provider. Um, and again, they may not mail you a form. I know mine doesn't mail me a form. I have to go onto the website where I make my payments and download the form from there to get the total of the student loan interest that I have paid. Um, but you gotta bring either of those if you received them. Um, the next one is your interest or dividend income. So these come on a 1099 DIV for dividends or 1099 INT for your interest. However many of them you received, you need to bring them with you. If you have multiple bank accounts, you need to bring the multiple ones with you. You can't just only give us one. We have to report all of them. And this is another one where 
your bank may not have mailed you anything. Um, my credit union never sends me my interest statement. I know that I have to go and check um, my December monthly bank statement that shows the total interest I earned for the year. So you may not have an actual form. You may have to check your last monthly statement out of 2021. If you have questions about that, you'll wanna check with your bank because we need to list all of that information on your tax return. All right, last page of important documents. Um, you will want to bring, if you paid any child care expenses or dependent care expenses, you probably got a letter from the company you were paying that will have their name, their contact information, their EIN, so that's like a federal number that shows what company it is. And it'll list how much was paid and for what person those charges were paid for. So if you got one of those letters, bring it with you. Um, you can get a credit for having paid those things. And there has been a change this year that if you didn't previously qualify for this in previous years, there's a change that you might qualify now. So definitely bring it with you. We'll help you figure out if you qualify now. Um, don't just assume you don't qualify because you didn't get it in the past. We'll help you figure that out. Um, as we stated earlier, bring any documentation of that advanced child tax credit, um, whether you got a letter, you looked it up in your bank statements, or you looked it up on the website, bring some documentation there. Same for your stimulus payments. Um, health insurance. If you bought insurance through the marketplace, uh, you have to bring your 1095A with you. Other health insurances, we don't need to report those, but definitely if you got a 1095A, bring it with you, we'll help you figure it out. If you got another health insurance statement, another 1095 that you're not sure what it means, definitely bring it with you also, and we'll help you figure that out. And lastly, bring your direct deposit information because you want your refund. Um, so hopefully everyone gets a refund and no one owes taxes, but uh, to get your refund the quickest way and the safest way, you will want to bring your bank account routing number and also the specific account number for, for you. Um, then you don't have to wait for them to mail you a paper check. Hopefully nothing would get lost in the mail. It goes straight into your bank account. If you don't have a bank account, um, we can, a lot of the Vita sites have a partnership with PNC. We can get you set up with a debit card right away and then your refund would go straight on to that debit card to get you the money. Um, and then other than that, any other random letters you get that say this is important for your taxes, anything you have a question about, bring it with you. Our wonderful volunteers and staff will help you figure out which things are needed or not. Um, and if you have previous years you haven't filed and you want help doing that, we can help you with that at VITA. You can file up to three years worth of taxes. Um, so if you didn't file 2020 and you wanna make sure you get stimulus payments one and two, bring all of the paperwork you would have for 2020 and we can help you get set up with that. Um, when you do your scheduling, you'll wanna let them know that you want to file multiple years. This way we can make sure we have enough appointment time set aside just for you. All right, so now how do you schedule an appointment? Um, so again, I'm at HSCC. This is why I'm highlighting this information, but we have partners around the county. Um, so our VITA tax site is open February 1st. So we start next week. We're open February 1st through April 14th. Uh, we're located in Turtle Creek, like I said. We're open Tuesdays and Thursdays, and both days are open 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, and we like to tell people, if you are filing like just one year's return 2021, you'll want to set aside at least an hour to be there with us. So we have time to put everything in. It gets reviewed. We have time to go over with you uh, what sort of credits you're getting, what your refund is, lots of papers that we then print out for you and you get to take home in that hour time frame. If you're filing multiple years, you'll want to schedule enough time to go through multiple years worth of stuff. So to schedule, you will call 
211. So this is the United Way helpline. Um, you can call them for all sorts of things, but they're definitely doing our tax filing. 211 works from your cell phone. If you have a landline that you know you're going to call from, it's a slightly different number, and this will be in the email in case you don't catch it as I say it, but it is 1-888-553-5555. So if you're working with like your elderly grandparents and they don't use cell phones, <laughs> you'll wanna give them the other number to call so they can still get connected. There is also going to be an option in about a week. You can go on this website, pa211southwest.org. Um, people can schedule their own appointments from that website. Um, right now it has a link where you can, um, at least when I checked right before this, you can enter your information to have someone call you to get your appointment set up. Um, whenever you get connected with United Way, if you wanna to come to Turtle Creek, that's great. Let them know you want Turtle Creek and they'll tell you when our next available appointment is. Um, if you need a different day of the week or a different time frame, feel free to use one of our other VITA partners, totally fine. Um, if you, like I had said, we're doing all in person. If you're not cool with that because of COVID, that's okay. There are other sites who are doing completely virtual sites and other sites where you'll go and drop off your paperwork and leave and come back so many days later to pick up the completed return. That fits, if that fits your situation better, that's totally fine. Let them know that you want a drop off for a virtual appointment. Um, I will say, while we are doing things in person at HSCC, we're following numerous COVID safety precautions. Um, everyone is gonna be wearing a mask, including our volunteers, all the other taxpayers. We're social distancing, taking temperatures of people. There are plexiglass dividers between everyone. Um, and if anyone is sick, has reported to uh, us or United Way that they've had COVID or been around someone who has COVID, right before their appointment, they're going to be rescheduling those. So we are in person, but we're trying to keep it as safe as humanly possible for everybody. 